Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and long time viewers of this channel are probably well aware of my love of Zelda, so I've been pretty excited about the Tears of the Kingdom. And when the newest trailer dropped and showed this big blocky boy rolling around, I knew what I had to do. Now any engineer worth their salt will be able to tell you that all the best blocky sword wielding rocky tank boys need to have a solid square core to ensure maximum squarification. To that end, I've marked out the relevant dimensions on this foam block so I can pop out a lovely little rectangular box. This little box will be the core of my top heavy tank and I'll use it to measure out some thinner sheets of foam so that I can cut them down to size and texturize them using the old hit it with a rock technique. Then a little hot glue on the backside will help to hold my stony sides in place. With the sides and top looking rock solid, I can bring in a slightly thicker sheet for the floor of my stabby cube car, which once cut to size, I can pre-poke some poke spokes for future wheels using a toothpick. Then I'll gently press the sides in before gently applying more rocky texture. Texture achieved, I can attach the top and the bottom together, then I can set this blocky boy aside while I get to work making its wheels. I'm going to make the wheels in two parts so that I can add plenty of detail to both sides without worrying about deforming one side while I work on the other. This means I need eight equally sized circles of clay, which, once chopped out and arranged in a satisfying row, I can start to poke and prod the various details into. Now, it's worth mentioning that at this point, although today is the release day for Tears of the Kingdom, I'm making this entire diorama based on what little info I can glean from the couple of trailers I've watched, so I highly doubt any of these details will be accurate to how they show up in-game. That means if you come back in a month or two and read through the comments, I'm sure you'll see lots of people leaving me helpful comments pointing out all the tiny details that I got wrong. And that's okay. In fact, I encourage it because comments make YouTube happy, and when YouTube is happy, Adam is happy. Actually, you know what? All the mistakes I've made throughout my 150 plus videos, they were all absolutely 100% on purpose in order to get people to leave me helpful comments. Random rant aside, my wheels are mostly finished with a few details I've been able to pull out of the marketing material, so the last thing to do will be to add the little direction arrow so you know which way the wheels roll and they're all finished so I'm ready to start painting my blocky tank boy. And as I always do when I'm painting foam, I'll start with a black Mod Podge base coat. This protects and seals the foam so that any subsequent rocky gray top coats adhere a bit better, as well as adding easy recess shading for the spots that I might miss while I'm painting. The rocky body gets a couple coats of dark gray followed by some heavy dry brushing with progressively lighter grays to bring out some of the sharper details and I can finish it off with some mossy green sponged sporadically onto the surface. From the few screenshots I've grabbed it looks like the wheels are mostly a dark slightly vomity looking green so I'll lay down a couple coats of that then add some lighter green highlights around the treads before adding a couple brassy bits here and there. Finally, there appear to be a lot of magical neon green lights flashing all over the place, so I've mixed up some fluorescent yellows and blues to give me an adequately bright green that I can use in lieu of the lights. It ended up drying a lot darker than I wanted since I didn't lay down a lighter base coat, but, you know, it's something to tell me about in the comments. While the wheels are drying, I'll set it all aside and get to work making the sword arm, which kinda just looks like a long cylindrical tube with a sword attached to the end. That should be pretty easy to knock up with a bit of clay, and if I build it in parts and then glue them together afterwards, it should help to sell the idea of it being a bunch of random bits of Hyrulean tech stuck together with magic. For the sword, I'm gonna go with an oversized guardian sword, which means it's just a normal sword with a whole bunch of curves cut into it. Then once it's all been baked, I can glue it all together and give it that same vomit green base coat, followed by a few brighter neon highlights. I'll then paint the sword with a fluorescent yellow with a white center to make it nice and glowy. Otherwise, that's the major pieces finished, so I can mix up a batch of magical green goo to stick everything together. Once I've got the wheels and a singular arm attached, I'll take a bit of the green goo and slip it between the cracks on the stone slabs since it seems to be the stuff that's holding this boxy tank together. And with that, my tank boy is built, so it's time to make his equally awesome enemy. 
Now this isn't my first time making a Bokoblin Talus, so I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going for here, since I spent a decent amount of time last time checking all the details to make sure it looked right. Last time it was significantly larger though, so if I do miss anything, I can at least just blame it on the scale. Now that I've turned my blocky rock boy into a roundy rock boy, I can add some rocky texture with this rock in much the same way I did for Link's square tanked sides. Now I've got a rocky textured roundy rock boy ready for a black mod podge base coat. Instead of grey though, this time I'll be painting my black lava talus into a dirty dirt talus with a series of browns, followed by some brown dry brushing with a bit of brown highlighting. Finally, once I've achieved peak potato appearance, I can use some tiny lengths of armature wire and big dabs of PEA glue to attach the various dirty limbs to the central potato chest, leaving me with an adorable, tiny, but still terrifying dirty stone talus ready for a Bokoblin base hat. The Bokoblin hat is made up of a few woody platforms which I'll make by cutting some stir sticks into short lengths then ripping those lengths in half so that I can glue them back together haphazardly. Once I've poorly rebuilt my stir stick base, I'll then glue some toothpick logs to the underside for lateral support. Then some more toothpicks jammed into the talus's shoulders will help to support my wooden floors. I made a tiny wooden lookout tower out of more toothpicks and stir sticks, and I made a little half wall barricade as well. Next I'll crack out a whole lot of toothpicks, then one by one I'll snip the tips. I can then take these tips and stick them to a strip of tape so that I can glue a central support log in the middle, then I can flip them over and add more spikes to the opposite side. These then will become the anti-climbing prevention measures that have been cleverly erected beneath the talus to keep Link from scaling the side of the beast and beating up on our unsuspecting bokoblins. Finally, some more support beams can get attached to the underside and once it's had ample time to dry, I'll give it a couple coats of brown wash, followed by a grayish wash to make it look more worn, then a lighter wash to make it look a bit brighter, and finally a bright beige dry brush to bring out the details and try to undo what was essentially a series of poor painting decisions. For a little added detail, and because it seemed like an easy idea at the time, I'll try and wind some very fine strands of unwound string around the tower so it looks like it's held together with rope. I'll then give up after two attempts and glue a big long strand of string spanning the two side platforms that I can then glue some teeny tiny fabric flags onto. These little flags are just made out of strips of fabric that I cut off an old t-shirt and dipped in brown wash. Once they're in place, I'll use some teeny tiny scissors to chop them down to more flag-like shapes, bearing in mind that these are Bokoblin flags, and I don't think they're super concerned about straight edges or clean lines. I can then attach a couple more strips of fabric to the top side of the tower using some super glue and tweezers in order to get them into the proper shape. I also made some red and blue flags that just get glued onto the sides. Finally, a bit of thinned out BVA glue will help me glue the small strips around the platforms and I can get started making the rest of the details out of clay. Every talus has an ore extrusion sticking out of its top, so for this particular talus I'll squish some black clay then cut the sides flat until it kind of looks like a lumpy luminescent stone deposit. Then I can make some teeny tiny horns out of white clay by sticking them onto a ball stylus and pinching the tips into the correct shape. Also, if you ever wonder why some of my links look so lonky, it's because I can't actually see what I'm doing. Once I've added a bit of texture to my horns, I can peel them off and add them to the tray for baking. Before that though, I'll make a couple long leg bones for later, as well as some teeny tiny skulls for the tower. Once it's all been baked, I can glue my stone deposit onto the talus' top side, add the skulls around the four posts of the tower, and then add the bones to the cross beams. I'll also need a little ladder, which I'll make out of stir sticks that have been chopped into the tiniest possible pieces of wood. I'll give this a quick wash and brown washes to tie it into the rest of the talus, and then I can glue it in place on the tower before finally gluing the horns onto the sides of the platforms. 
Last but not least, I'll give all the bones an off-weight bone white wash to sunbleach them, then the stone will get a coat of high gloss varnish and I can repaint the flags red with haphazardly added orange artwork, as well as give the little wooden half wall a bit of decoration too. Otherwise, that's the last of the work to be done on the talus, so it's time to make my base. In the trailer, our two mighty kaiju are meeting in the middle of a road on a mostly flat field and I've got this perfectly sized piece of previously loved plastered foam that is the absolutely perfect fit. Of course, it's a bit flat, so to build up the bottom a bit more and make it a little less boring, I'll mix up a batch of hole filler, mod podge, and brown and ochre paint, then apply it to the top like a delicious cursed cake. Once I've got the sides a bit more hilly with a slight curve onto the road beneath, I'll set it aside to dry then come back with my airbrush to add some darker brown dirt to the raised up sections followed by a much lighter beigey color to the center where the road will be. The non-road section is covered in a thick layer of grass so I'll lay down a layer of basing glue on both sides then crack out my static grass applicator. I've got some 3mm green field static grass which should be perfect for this scale so once it's popped into the applicator I can start to lay it down until the entire glued section is covered. A quick flip and tap will knock off the excess and I'm left with a delightful little grassy road. Some teeny tiny pebbles and brown sand will add a bit of texture and color variation and I can set my mighty combatants in place. And with that, we are, well, we're, we're not done yet. Now it's been a hot minute since I made a teeny tiny link, but today marks the release of Tears of the Kingdom, so it only seems fitting to make the teeniest tiniest link I've ever made. From toes to the tips of his flowing golden locks, this link is gonna stand at a whopping 10 millimeters tall, or for my American viewers, roughly the width of a single freedom fry. Speaking of America, someone asked why I haven't made more Zelda stuff, what with the game releasing so soon. And, well, you see, I live in a country where dates are written day, month, year. So when the trailers came out, I assumed the game was releasing on the 5th of December. So imagine my surprise and delight when I remembered how the Freedom Calendar works. All that to say that I haven't made much since I kinda thought I had another 7 months or so until it released. Otherwise, this teeny tiny Tears of the Kingdom link is ready for the little details which I'll paint on after he's been baked. I'll add his right arm tattoo as well as the brass armbands, then paint a wonky eye on the back of his shield. Also, it wouldn't be a North of the Border link video if I didn't give him crazy lonk eyes. <coughs> Nintendo's been cranking down on YouTubers for copyright infringement, so I thought I'd play it safe by making this link nearly unrecognizable. With Lung finished, I can get to work making my blue Bacoblin baddies who go through pretty much the same process. I'll start with a teeny tiny armature wire and coat the wire in a thin layer of blue clay, then add an oversized pig head, stick on some ears, then cut a mouth and add some little eyes so I can stick a pink pig nose in the middle. I'll then jam a double-ended single horn on top and wrap his waist in a shame-covering brown loincloth before gluing a pre-baked wooden Bacoblin bat onto his right arm. Then it's into the oven to bake so I can paint on the finer details starting with his brown leather wrist wraps followed by some questionable stains around the already questionably colored loincloth. His toes and fingernails will get a bone white nail polish to help them stand out and I can paint his ears and mouth pink then add some darker pink to his nose before giving his eyes a one-two of red and yellow. Finally, I'll add a gray triple brow and random body spots, then paint the horns with a muddy grayish brown. Then I'll repeat all these steps twice more until I've got a terrible trio of blue bacoblins. To attach Link to the tank, I'll dab a bit of green goo onto the top, then stick this little steering wheel I made into that so I can attach Link to his battle box. Then it's just a case of gluing my bacoblins in place. Is it Bacoblins or is it Bocoblins? And I've just been mispronouncing it the entire time. Regardless, with them in place, we're all done here and on to the glamour shots.
As always, a massive thank you to the absolute gems over on Patreon who continue to support this channel, and a very special shout out to my newest patrons. Lauren Richer Me, Mayonnaise69, Jason Krampitz, A Cryptic Message, Noah Peter Pumpkin and Mitzi, Slave to My Loins, May, Quirpy, Aristotle Throttle Bottle, J Mac Likes Stuff, Mrs. Snow, Aristha, Go the Hammers, Layla Aranow, and Lucifer's Angel. You are the big rocky blocky boy upon which this channel rides. Tears of the Kingdom is out right now, so if you're watching this instead of playing that, then thanks. I, uh, I appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll, um, see you next time. Cheers.